Time is three minutes after the hour. We are live and in color here on the Fred McNair Radio Show on this Monday night. Glad you could join us here on the Alcorn Football Radio Network, WMIS WTYJ, 97.7 FM, 12.40 AM, Fayette Natchez, and in Hattiesburg, WGDQ, 93.1 in the Hub City. And, of course, here on the beautiful campus of Alcorn State University, WPRL 91.7 FM, the flagship station of the Brave Sports Network, and WPRL.org. Glad you can join us. We have a live link to this show on Facebook if you want to listen live. And when the show's over, we will repost in a podcast version, and you can check out the show anytime you like. And a lot of folks are checking out the uh, podcast version if they can't catch it live. We're here with Braves head football coach, Fred McNair. Good evening, Coach. How you doing? Good evening, Charles. Tell you what, uh, tough one uh, against Grambling on Saturday. Uh, seven fumbles. Um, we lost four. Had chances early. I counted. We were in Grambling territory eight times on Saturday. So we we had forward momentum, just couldn't quite uh, get the points on the board and take advantage of some early opportunities. Well, when you have when you have turnovers like that, Charles, you you seem to not be able to take advantage of it, and you can't have that uh, against a football team as such as Grandma. Um, I thought they took advantage of every opportunity they had of our, uh, of our turnovers, and um, I think that we were just we were just bad from that standpoint. Uh, I thought that you know we, we played um, pretty good in spots as a team, um, but the biggest thing that shows up is those turnovers, and that, and that played a big factor in what we were trying to do um, as a team uh, to win this ball game. But um, we just got to correct that and. Make sure that don't happen more. You have three interceptions uh, by one quarterback, and, and then you have numbers of fumbles uh, by the other quarterback. So, you know, you're playing those two guys, and, and really you look for a um, better lead and better games out of those quarterbacks in that position, and you expect um, more out of those guys than what they gave you on Saturday. So we didn't we didn't have much of those two guys in some spots, and um, we didn't do the thing we should have done to capitalize on the thing that we did, supposed to do in the red zone. Uh, that would score touchdowns, and, and that would happen. You, you turn the ball over to a good football team such as Grambling, and, 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 and you get beat like that. So uh, we can't afford to do that. You know, when when you look at it, Coach, you know, early in the ball game, you know, against good teams, you know, you got to take your shots, and then you got to make your shots. And uh, early on, you know, Grambling grabbed an early lead, and then of course, as we pick up the highlight here, we we come right back uh, as Grambling grabbed the lead. And it was a 17-yard run by Kincaid, but that was set up by a big play, Kincaid to, to Martez Carter. You know, I thought we made him earn his yards running the football, but he had a big catch you know, as he came out as a slot receiver, and that set up the first Tiger score. Well, yeah, it did. I mean, the safety got to call that. He got to get up on top of that and uh, make that play uh, there at Charles and um, didn't, didn't do it. Um, just a matter of communication, uh, breakdown in that part, you know, we, we didn't have our normal safety uh, starting that position until LaShawn Ely. So, you know, communication-wise, uh, he's the guy that, that kind of the quarterback of the defense in the secondary. So um, when you miss guys that don't play like that, you, it kind of hurts when you, when you have to sub guys in and, and uh, you don't have that communication guy back there in the backfield. So Grambling scored on the 17-yard Kincaid run. It was 7 to nothing. Grambling 54 seconds into the first quarter. So the first Braves drive started at their own 12 got to the 34, where it was second down and 20. So that was a big play, and the Braves got down to the one yard line, you got down to the one, and it was a fourth down and goal, Coach McNair. So talk a little bit about the, the thinking and going for it. You know, McCullough's good for the three, but you obviously were thinking something more. Yeah, we're trying to um, we're trying to get an end zone charge. Now we know three points is not going to get against Grambling where they play, so uh, we figured we'd go for a touchdown there. I thought we had the right thing called uh, just communication on the motion. And, uh, one of those things that, that failed again, you know, miscommunication there. And, um, I think I thought we had the right play call for that at that time, and uh, just communication on the motion there to kind of stop us on that play. Yeah, 
happened. So we'll talk about how that play was supposed to work. Yeah, that was supposed to be an emotion on that play, Charles. So uh, Delance mistakenly put Marquise in motion. And at that time, Marquise kind of stopped right there at the quarterback spot. I don't know if he was waiting on the ball, but he's never uh, in motion on that play. It's a direct snap to Delance. Um, and what we're trying to do now is to take a little more pressure off the quarterback and get hit more um, in that standpoint where we use Delance um, as a wildcat guy. We had a good play call. I thought we got us in the end zone, but just like I said, miscommunication on the, on the motion point. So there was an opportunity. Grambling took over at their three with seven minutes left in the first quarter. They went three and out. And after a Mendez 40-yard punt, the Braves started at Grambling's 45. And there was another opportunity, one of eight times that we were in Grambling territory, Coach. So that was an opportunity there with good field position. Yeah, we always had a good field position. I mean, we just um, just mis-executed. You know, that's the biggest thing. Uh, we didn't do uh, well we should have. Um, expectation going in that game was to execute and we kind of minimize your, your, your hands on the ball. Um, but we had no opportunity to get in there and score no points, and that's what we got to do. We got to score uh, against a good team like that, you know, and, that, and that's what you got to do. You got to score touchdowns, and, uh, and we failed to do that um, on certain instances on all plays. So as we fast forward to 413 left in the first quarter, Grambling started at their own 13-yard line and got to the Braves 47, where as we pick up this highlight, it was second down and 10. And that was Morrison with the pick. So wanted to get him moving, get him on the run. He made some plays on the run. Let's talk about uh, Morrison and that pick. That was a great play by him, and, you know, um, I expect that of him, you know, playing that position, you know. He's a corner, and, and he, he make plays for us. And he just got to get back in the groove of things and, and getting himself back in the plan to, to where he's capable of making those plays like that all the time. So um, he's a great guy, and he's going to continue to play well and uh, just keep him up and keep going. So despite the fact that we got a pick, despite the fact that we were at Grambling's one-yard line, and despite the one big play and the one big run that Grambling had, it was just 7 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, I mean, we're right there in the ball game, Charles, and that's the thing about it. You know, we don't have those mistakes. We, 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 the game's easily tied right now. Um, we don't do the fumble on the one-yard line there, and, and uh, we take advantage of those opportunities that we have on their side of the field. You know, we, we need to be up, you know, so uh, those things that, that, that we got to get better at, we, we talk about that every day and go out and work at it every day and practice, and, you know, for it to happen to us in a game such as this one, um, it's kind of discouraging uh, in a way to where, you know, just just kind of just continue to press the issue with these guys and make them understand uh, the situation that they're in. So it was seven to nothing at the end of the first quarter. That takes us to our first break. It's 11 minutes after six o'clock. Don't forget, you can check in with us on Facebook, Tall oh Man Radio on Twitter, Charles Edmond on Facebook, and you can give us a call 601-877-6595. You can text a question. We have some of those that we'll get to. 601-300-3124. You can text a question anytime you would like. We'll use it on the show. We've got some text. And um, also, give us a call as well. 601-877-6595. Tweet a question. Tall Man Radio. We'll take a break, and we'll be right back with the second quarter highlights after this one-minute timeout. Welcome back to the Fred McNair Radio Show on this Monday night. Glad you can join us. Coach, to end the first quarter, we started at our own 47-yard uh, line, and we actually got into Grambling territory again. So the chances continue throughout the first half. So just talk about that with Charles Hughes getting involved and making some catches on this particular drive in the second quarter. Well, those are things that, that we're capable of doing when we, when we execute right and, 
and do all the right things in our route running and in situations like that, we're, we're capable of making those kind of plays. And I think Charles Hughes has become a, a real good receiver for us. You know, we missed him last year, and uh, he really, he really playing his, he playing his butt off right now um, with his catches and uh, the way he's playing now. So it's a, it's a good pickup for us uh, the way we, the way he's playing. So it's an addition to the things that we can do um, for our offense. And Charles Hughes with the catch, and it was set up as Delance Turner in the second quarter tied the game. On the set play here, Delance Turner wide open touchdown. Best looking play of the night there, and you really spread Grambling out, and Delance Turner was not touched. Oh, yeah, I mean, that's just a matter of executing everybody doing their job, Charles, and, and we emphasize that every day in practice, everybody do their job, you know, on both sides of the ball. Um, that's what we emphasize as coaches. Um, we don't ask nobody to do any, anybody else's job, but just do their job. And, and when, when they do their job and do it right, that's, what, that's the results that you get. Six play, 57 yard drive, and it was a 7 7 game. Grambling's next possession started at their own 25, and they moved the football to their own 47. Kincaid back to pass. Look, steps up, going to lob this one long, deep down the field, underthrown. Oh, ball. that's oh, pass on the field. Touchdown. He pushed it. That was an underthrown ball. Yeah. Oh, they went deep. Ball was underthrown. The receiver made the adjustment. And that was Khalif Salmon with the catch. Coach, we gave up two touchdowns. He can help us on coverage. One was an underthrown ball, that particular one. And then you hear the phrase back shoulder throw very often in, in coverage. Talk a little bit about those and how, as a defender, you defend underthrown balls in back shoulder throws because Grambling had at least one touchdown both ways. It's kind of tough, Charles, and, you know, and, and, and defending um, those kind of throws. I, I don't know if it was a, a, a just an underthrown ball on purpose or not, but uh, the ball didn't get reached. I mean, the guy was running. Um, but we just got to get our head around and find the ball and make sure we find our man and, and, uh, and get our head around and find it. We just laid on doing that, and, and uh, the receiver pushed us on by and came back and, um, and caught the pass and, uh, and scored. But, you know, we just got to make sure we, we we can find the ball, you know, and, just, and, um, and uh, make sure we locate it. So at that point, the Tigers go right back out on top, 14-7 to seven with the ensuing kickoff. And the kick, Warford, right to left from the three. So a solid return there by Warford. I mean, he does a great job of returning kicks, and he just got to continue to do it. But he just sometimes uh, he don't really hit the hole the way he should hit it. Uh, right then, he did find it and, uh, and do it right, do it the right way this time, so you know, he's a, he's a real good return guy. But three plays in, uh, drop snap, a fumble, and a turnover. What happened there? I just, Footman just, just losing the ball. I mean, it's right in his hand, and I don't know if his hand was too wet or, or, or what. Um, he had a couple of those uh, um, snaps like that, and uh, he dropped it. But I don't know if his hand was too wet. He got him out of the sleeve he was wearing, but I guess that didn't help him either, Charles. So, we just got to make sure we secure the ball when we get those quarterback. We got to seek the ball and, uh, before we do anything with it. So with Warford's return um, and the fumble, the Tigers take advantage of that, and they go up 21 to seven. And then there was another turnover in there, Coach. So back-to-back -back turnovers really swung the momentum Grambling's way. It did, and once the momentum swung, you know, it's kind of tough, Charles, and, and uh, that's what it did. You know, have back-to-back -back turnovers and and. Um, and as quarterbacks, we, we have to understand that we, we can't do that. Um, we can't turn the ball over, not from that position, whether it's passing or, or running with the ball. So um, that, that, that momentum swing there is pretty big, and it was big for them uh, just staying up. And like I said, you know, you turn over against a good team like, like Gremlin, and that stuff kind of stuff happens. Uh, you have those momentum swings like that. And that's what it did, and uh, they was up the whole game, and, and you know, just trying to, trying to fight back through all the things. And, with all the turnovers issue that we had, you know, it was kind of tough um, to, to continue that, to play the way we should play. It was Carter to Kegler after that second turnover, 18 yards out, that capped off a 25-yard drive. 
So we talked about the back-to-back -back turnovers, and the Tigers led 21-7. to At that point, they would add a field goal with nine seconds left to go up 24-7 to at the half. Now, you've always talked about throughout the course of the season, you know, sometimes you don't have to say anything to a, a veteran team. They know what's at stake, and they know what's behind, what's been behind them and what's in front of them. Was there a, a, any passionate speech at the half I of mean, this you one? Know, they, they know you're playing a good football team. They know you, you have to stay focused on one, and you just have to just fight. And I, I thought we lost a lot of, all those things, Charles. We didn't, we didn't finish anything. Uh, we didn't fight like we should. We definitely wasn't focused because we focused. We no turnover would happen like that. So um, those are the biggest things that we had. You know, just, and just going out and competing the second half uh, was kind of big for us, you know, just coming back and trying to, trying to our way back into things, and um, we weren't able to do that because, like I said, the turnovers kept coming. Yeah, uh, the tweet has come in. We've got a bunch of tweets, so we'll sprinkle those in. Uh, you, you talk about leadership. Every coach talks about leadership. When adversity hits, leadership steps in. Uh, just talk about that because a tweet, uh, someone obviously have tweeted about the leadership. When things kind of go awry, who steps up or whom steps up to kind of correct things? Well, that's the biggest deal, and we talked about it as coaches. And, uh, Biggest thing is, you know, in this football, been been lacking that for a long time. You want to see those guys that, that show leadership, especially your seniors. You know, that they want to they want to step in and, and, and talk to the guys and, and say, let's do this. But you know, we, we're lacking a little of that, Charles. And um, you know, um, as coaches, we know that that that's our job. We have to make sure that those guys are are, are getting the right inspirational speeches and things like that to, to get back in the ball game and, and selling down. But you know, we wish everybody would just take it upon themselves to be uh, that leader, but we, we, we lack so much of it, uh, Charles. I don't know. Uh, you just can't um, teach leadership. I mean, that's something that's come within. Um, I know as a player, you know, I was like that. I, I, was, I was a leader on the field as well as off the field. But, you know, um, in, this, in, this, in this generation, it's tough to find those guys like that, this, this natural leader that comes on the field. And, and when they step on the field, everybody knows things finna get done, you know, and that's what we got to really just, we, we keep stressing that, not only this year, it's been the year past, and all the years that I've been here as a coach, it's been the same way, so um, it's just not, it's, this is just not happening, um, starting now, so it's been happening in the, in the past, um, just trying to find that guy to, to be that leader, um, the right guy, you know, everybody can say they, they're a leader about saying certain things, but um, leadership, it shows up, you know, um, on and off the field, the things, the way you carry yourself and, and the way you conduct yourself around this campus and, and the way you conduct yourself around players every week during practice. You know, that's what leadership is about. But, um, you know, you just can't, that's something you just can't turn on and turn off. That's something you have to have all the time. So um, we're still seeking that from, from these guys, and, and that's what we talk about every day. Somebody have to step up and be that leader. And, um, and right now, you know, we're still trying to identify that guy, you know, you, you love for it to be your quarterback, but Footman, he's a silent type guy. He, you don't have much words to say, but you know sometimes action sometimes shows up with him, you know, the things he do on the field. Um, and you love to have those guys like that to be you. But you know, in some cases, it, it, we just don't have that prolific leader. Um, you know, everybody want to take charge sometimes, but like I said, leadership takes a lot of courage and a lot of a lot of within the heart stuff to to do that. The guy that kind of comes out and and call people out when they're doing wrong. And uh, the guy that come and calls out and come to the coaches and ask the coaches, say, coach, we need uh, this done, uh, something like that. That's what a leader do. You know, he, take, he takes advantage of every opportunity he have to make sure that this group of young men are doing the right thing on and off the field. We'll take a timeout right here. The time is 22 minutes after 6 o'clock. We'll be right back with the third quarter highlights as the Braves try to make a charge here in the second half. We'll break down all the numbers of this game, taking your phone calls at 601-877-6595. You can text a question, 601-300-3124. We appreciate Alexis Smith and her tweet. T-Rank's got one. We'll get to that, and we'll get to the second half highlights when we return in 60 seconds. I'm Matt from C Spire, and I work for you. A lot of people ask about the new iPhone 7. Short answer, it's incredible. Experience it with maximum range LTE from C Spire. Mind blown. Max range LTE delivers 80% more coverage in every direction. I work to get the most out of your amazing new iPhone 7 with max range LTE. C Spire, customer inspired. 
Switch and save on iPhone 7. Now 50% off with iPhone 6 trade-in. Details at tspire.com. A wise man once said, you can kill a man, but you can't kill an idea. What he meant was that knowledge is eternal. It's a lesson learned, a goal achieved, and it can be passed on from generation to generation, just like it is every day at all corners. Both knowledge and the character it takes to use it wisely. All corn, where knowledge and character matter. All right, welcome back to the Fred McNair Radio Show on this Monday night. The Braves are off this week. I believe, Coach, we may be, and I'm, I'm not sure, but we might be the last team to have a bye week. I think everyone else has had one but us to this point. Charles, and I, and I, and I say this, and it couldn't come out a better, a better time. You know, um, we played the Texas Southern, we played the Alabama State, so we played the Prairie View and the Grand Lake now. And, you know, uh, we need our, our guys that have played a, a, a eight-game schedule, an unbelievable schedule, and, and my hat's pulled off to those guys because they have done a, a tremendous job so far in doing the things that they're supposed to do and, and, and keeping their body in shape and, and things like that. And of course, we'll, we'll beat up a little bit, um, and this week could be a great week for us uh, for the bye week. Um, I mean, we just got to get some guys back healthy and, and get them and get back to the basic things that we got to do to fix this stuff that happened this past Saturday. Well, the, the obvious question, when Norris Footman went down, it was reported a shoulder issue. How is it looking 48 hours later? Well, right now we're still waiting on, uh, waiting on the doctor. We had a doctor visit today, and we'll, we'll know something today or tonight uh, with him and hope it's not so, too severe that he can't continue to play for us. Uh, uh, but, you know, we just got to continue to make sure that we getting the guys the proper treatment, which I think that we're doing, the, doing a great job uh, of getting those guys the proper treatment that they needed to get them back to the field as soon as we can. Tell you what, it was a physical game. I mean, we had some players go down. I mean, Gramlin had players dropping like flies, it seemed like. Oh, it was a battlefield, Charles. And, uh, you know, and that's one thing that, that, that we did uh, tell our kids. It's going to be a physical game. Um, it was physical all the way to the end. And, uh, you know, we, we, we fought and we played. And, and uh, it was a battle. Battlefield, you have bodies laying everywhere. So. Yeah, <laughs> like a minefield for sure. It was, all, it was all that way until the end. All right, so let's uh, look into the third quarter highlights. The Braves started at their own 25 yard line in the third quarter and they got to the Tigers 47, where they were faced with a fourth down in 20. And now McCullough to take off. McCullough tackled short, short of the first down by half yard. By a half yard short, the longest yard and the shortest mm -hmm. half yard. Talk about the decision. That's to go. a game against the Charles. And just think about we we are down and trying to get a spark by by using that that fake um, the fake punt. I thought we had it. Um, you know, uh, if if he, if he hits it right away, we we'll get we we'll get it. Uh, if you stay outside of Will Gordon, William Gordon right there, you get get the first down. It was it was a thing that's trying to get a spark and, and trying to contain keep the ball and. We had them. We looked at it all week during film, and we saw it was there. So we tried to take advantage of that uh, fake punt. Of course, Noah Johnson came into the game in, in the uh, third quarter. Uh, the Tigers got a field goal in the third, a 23-yard field goal by Orozco with 5-12 left in the third to make it 27-7. Gene in later in the third, Noah Johnson, a pass picked off by Shy, returned 51 yards for the touchdown to make it 34-7. You know, one thing I like about Noah Johnson, he, he runs the play till he just can't run it. You know, he might improvise at the last minute, but he's going to try to find that receiver and try to work it in there. And uh, that pass was picked off by Shy. Yeah, I mean, he, he, he actually took two minute steps, I think, in, in, his, in his running, in his sprint out uh, to throw back to the running back, which he was open early. Uh, but he let him get down the field too far and didn't quite see that corner sitting there to safety. Uh, just picks it off. And, uh, he saw it on tape, and he know that that ball kind of be out a whole lot sooner than that. You get it to him quicker now. Now the running back PJ is on the safety one on one. You know, possibly gonna score off that one, but uh, well, they waited too late to throw it, and uh, got it picked up. So it was 34 to seven at the end of the third quarter. Turnovers the story, as we've talked about. We were in Grambling territory twice, coach, in that third quarter. You know, who knows if we we cash in on those? Uh, who knows where the game would be at that point? Charles self inflicted wounds, man. I tell you, you know, like I say, when you have seven turnovers, you have three interceptions, two punts, return, muff, and one from a loss by the quarterback, and then you get down, turnover on downs, you know, 
it always plays a factor in you. You can't beat anybody with that, Charles. If we don't have those turnovers, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty good ball game, I think. And uh, we execute the play that's called, and, and uh, we got a good ball game going on. But those turnovers wouldn't allow us to do it. So um, that's what you get when you have those turnovers like that. We can't, we can't have that. All right, 28 minutes after the hour, we have a break coming up. But first, this from the Alcorn State University Foundation, calling all faithful alumni. We need every Alcorn alum and friend to be in Jackson at the State Capitol on Tuesday, March the 6th, 2018 at 8 a.m. for the annual Purple and Gold Day at the Mississippi Capitol. Alcorn needs your support for full funding of our legislative agenda in the 2018 Mississippi Legislative Session. Save the date, Tuesday, March the 6th, 2018, to join fellow alumni at the Mississippi State Capitol Building in Jackson for Purple and Gold Day. We'll take a one-minute break. Second half of the Fred McNair Radio Show coming up. Your texts, tweets, and phone calls, a lot of those will come in. We'll look at the SWAP report, update the standings. we got a question about where are we in the standings and what do we need to do going forward. We'll talk about that, and we'll look ahead to the bye week as well. So all that coming up. On the other side of this one minute break on the Fred McNair Radio Show. WPRL 91.7 FM, Old Coin Public Radio, broadcasting from the campus of Old Coin State University. WPRL invites our listeners to join us each and every day for the best in gospel, jazz, RB, and hip hop. WPRL is Old Coin Sports Radio Network. WPRL is on the World Wide Web at WPRL.org. WPRL, it's a family affair. Charles Evans, Operation Manager. Jay Miles, Gospel Music Director, System Analyst and Internship Supervisor, Myrtle Hedrick, Secretary and Traffic Director and Chair of the Mass Communication Club, Jamario Chavez Brooks, R&B Announcer and Producer, WPRL, your community-minded radio station where it's a family affair. <laughs> All right, folks. Ninety-one point seven FM, broadcasting from the campus of Alcorn State University. All right, thank you very much, Jamario Brooks, uh, Station ID. He, he beat us to the punch there, the bottom of the hour here on the Fred McNair Radio Show. Glad you could join us here on this Monday night, uh, having the highlights of the Grambling game. It was a great crowd. I mean, a great turnout from. Uh, the Purple and Gold, the band, and uh, it was a highly anticipated game. A lot of folks thought it was probably the game of the year going in, but uh, it was a tough one, to say the least. So it was 34-7 to going into the fourth quarter. The Braves would get on the board right here to make it a three-score game. Here's the last Turner again. Sheds a tackler, and there goes Turner, 35-30. He's at the 25, then the 20, 15-10, and he scores. So that made it 34-14, Coach McNair. It's a three-score game early for a quarter. Yeah, it is. And uh, I thought the Lions did a great job of uh, doing the things he, should, he do as far as running the football. And uh, he's always been that guy, you know, in the game, the situation, stuff like that. And he's continued to improve his game every week. Um, and that's something that he, he takes personal um, every day of practice. So he, he's running the ball hard for us. So you tried an onside kick and got it. Yeah, I think Coach Thornton been been trying to get that one from me all all year, and uh, finally we we got it. The first time we did it, we executed it very well. Um, kind of thought uh, Charles Pringle was gonna let it go out of bounds for a minute to the last second there, but he he was able to grab it and stay in bounds, and we get that onside kick. So we got the onside kick. It was fourth down and eight. Noah Johnson's pass picked off by Hatter. Grambling added a touchdown. And then uh, Marquise Warford trying to feel the punt went off his fingertips and recovered by Grambling in the end zone. That's just tough. I mean, that's something we, we just got to, if we're going to feel the ball, we got to feel it. So uh, he, he wasn't able to feel it and he got away from it. So the final score is 41 to 14, final score. So we'll take a break here, look at the numbers. We'll get to the text and tweets and your phone calls. Give us a call, 601 877 6595. 601 877 6595. The Braves with two scores. They were in Grambling territory eight times during the game. The first downs were about even. So we'll go inside the numbers of this one and we'll talk about the SWAC report and the bye week coming up. So a lot to talk about. We'll get to it in one minute. A promise was made. A promise that hit the beaches of Normandy. A covenant that split the skies over Berlin. A vow that captured Iwo Jima. A promise was made. A solemn oath that liberated soul. 
a sacred trust that defended Quezon, a pact that dug in at Da Nang, a contract that weathered Tet. A promise was made, a pledge that stormed the desert in Iraq, a bond that patrolled door to door in Fallujah, an IOU that braved IEDs in Kandahar. A promise was made to America's veterans, a promise we all must keep. DAV fights for all veterans and their families so they get the health care, financial benefits, and support they earn. If you're a veteran who needs help or you'd like to help us keep the promise, visit DAV.org. All right, welcome back. The time is 33 minutes after the hour. A lot of text and tweets. You can uh, text a question at 601-300-3124. And Coach McNair, here's a text from Earl from Hazelhurst talking about playing Footman and Warford. It's obvious they're not at 100%. We can see it from the stands. And Saturday would have been the best time for Simmons to get some extra playing experiences from Earl. We'll talk a little bit about that. Just playing, you know, I guess being banged up. And I, I know I guess you have to, you know, they're giving, giving their effort despite not being 100%. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Footman's always been 100% from day one. It's, it's by far the only time that he got hurt, um, banged up this time. So, he, he should be okay, and and um, you know um, PJ, you know he'll get a chance to get his carries and and, um, and everything too as well. You know just the way um, things fall in play. You know if they hurt, I mean uh, if they can play and um, and 90 percent, you know they, they'll be fine. But if they're less than that, I, I can't see myself just putting myself in a position where those guys get in banged up anymore. All right, Dennis from Hattiesburg. Do we have any short yardage plays where the quarterback gets under center? No, we haven't. We, uh, we really, we really don't, and and um, I don't think the quarterback right now is too comfortable with that. We tried it during uh, during camp for a little while, and and uh, it's always been that way. So um, it's something to think about, though. I uh, appreciate that, though, Dennis. And another question, uh, talking about uh, the shot being out of the shotgun on the goal line instead of being under center. Talk a little bit about that. I, I mean, it's no different. Uh, Sometimes when, when you're up under there, you know, uh, anything can happen as well. Sometimes, you know, just dealing with the ball personally and, and getting in the shotgun and, and just who really handling the ball, I guess, for one, uh, would be the thing. So we handled the way we handled this past game, and it still wasn't any good. So we, we made a lot of turnover uh, in the shotgun. So, um, you know, uh, it's, it's no different. And you have to hand off uh, from up on the center, just like you have to hand off from the side of the, the side of the quarterback. So. Uh, it's just not really any, any much different than what you're doing. Uh, T rank a question and a comment. He listened to the uh, situation about your lead, what you talked about, the leadership, and he definitely agreed with that. And then he asked a question of uh, the snap fumble with three different quarterbacks. Is it, is it an issue with our center? Yeah, I don't think all the, all the snap was pretty good. I thought some of them was kind of low, but they was handleable. You know, we, we work on that. Um, all day and every day of practice. So I think, you know, I, I don't know, one time foot hit him dead in the, in the midsection, man, and he dropped the ball in. So and I don't think I have anything to do with snap. Maybe one uh, was kind of low uh, during the course of the game, but the rest of them was very easy to handle, I thought. All right, so as we look at the uh, final numbers, I remember last year coaching, I look at Kincaid, and we, we see this in the NFL. You know, Aaron Rodgers goes down and quarterbacks go down. Um, quarterback for Arizona is out with a broken arm, you've got to have a quarterback to make it happen. And you look at someone like Ken Cade, I thought the pocket was collapsing around him. He found ways to make plays. Talk about how we were able to get after him. He had the big play to Carter at first, and he made some plays with his feet. He was able to, you know, off-balance throws, making the throws. Of course, we talked about the back shoulder throws and the under throws. But talk about how we were able to get some pressure on Ken Cade. Well, by design, I thought Coach Stewart did a great job with the defensive line and defensive ends of getting pressure, collapsing the pocket. But we still left some lanes in the middle of it, so he can, that's where he escaped it through the middle. Uh, we just got to make sure that we're doing a job as far as um, our, our, our inside interior guys to, to kind of collapse the pocket on them. And that, that's where he escaped that through the middle. And a couple of times he got on the outside edges and and, um, and got outside the pocket there a little bit. But I thought we did a great job of getting after him and, and making him feel uncomfortable for the most part of it. I think last year we had six sacks on Kincaid. We had three in this game, so we were able to get to him and rattle him a little bit. Yeah, we did, and that's one thing that we, 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 we try to do the whole game is just make him uncomfortable back there. And so uh, he was able to escape a, a, a couple of times and get outside the play. 
So you look at Kincaid, he was 17 of 26 for 268. Uh, Martez Carter, I thought we made him earn everything he got. He had the long run of 16. That was early in the game, but other than that, I know they were trying to feed him, feed him, and they were expecting you know, him to break one. He really didn't, and I, how, how would you assess how we handled Carter? I thought it was pretty good, you know, um, just tackling well. We should have had him sometime he gained five yards when he should have been getting knocked down for two. Um, they really just tackled him. I thought we did a pretty good job of containing him. You know, you're never going to be able to slow or uh, stop a big back like that, um, but just kind of contain him a little bit and slow him down, doing some of the things that, that um, he's not normally doing. All right, so you look at the uh, individual numbers. Delance Turner, 106 yards uh, running the football. Grambling had been giving up an average of about 70 yards per game on the ground, Coach, and we hit him for a buck 95. I mean, we we, we thrive on running the ball, uh, Charles, and, and you know, I mean, as, as bad as it seemed, uh, the way we played, other than the turnover, there's some bright spots there, you know. You look at rushing the football, and. And then we also did a little passing, um, but those are the things that we're capable of doing if we just execute um, and not have all those turnover charges. And that's the that's the that's the blaring spot of this whole game is the turnovers. Um, you look at the penalties; we had seven penalties for 71 yards. You know they had 13 for 105. So yeah. you know it's almost six and one and a half a dozen another when you, when, you, when you look at that. And you, you, you trade the, the penalties for turnovers. Um, so we just got to just get it all together. And, uh, and um, make sure this stuff here don't happen anymore because we got a big game coming up in two weeks. Yeah, Lenoris Footman, 5 of 12 in the game, and Noah Johnson, 8 of 17. He had the three picks. Just talk about the game that he had because we know what Noah Johnson can do. He did it last year early in the season when Foot went down on a couple of occasions. Arkansas, he played against UAPB, didn't even Grambling last year, but uh, sort of tough slating 8 of 17. I mean, it's tough, and then a lot of things was some misses that he, that he made. And then the three picks, you know, um, unelevised picks, you know, he throw the right to him. Um, and he just didn't see it, I guess, you know, just not clear to him right then. But um, you know, just kind of settle down and play football. And, and uh, I don't know what it is that, 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 that I don't know Gremlin got on us, but they just, they just seem like they just feel like they're under pressure when we play them guys. And, and it's not no pressure at it. Just go out and execute the way we should and play football. But um, if that wasn't the case this game. We did, we did not execute the way we should have uh, without no turnover. Felix Harper got a snap. You know, after Noah Johnson lost his helmet, um, we were talking in the booth about maybe going to a Wildcat and not using Felix Harper, but he came in for that one play. Yeah, he's going to be a great quarterback for us, Charles. And that's something that he, he worked hard every day. Uh, he always asks some questions about things. And, and that's what you want out as a guy that, that comes in and want to be a quarterback, you want to max question and stuff like that. So he's going to be good for us on down the line. All right, so when you look at the receivers, Coach, Jalen Walker, four receptions for 76 yards. Uh, Charles Hughes, you talked about him. Let's talk about Pringle, a, a guy that uh, late in the game we saw a couple of receivers, Corbin Johnson and Pringle. Some of the young guys are coming along, Charles, and uh, Coach Harris does a great job with those guys at receiver spot and, and, uh, and doing things that they do. Um, the Charles Pringle, you know, from Gaucher down on the coast down there. Um, real good player. You know, he, he's a quiet type of player, but uh, he's very effective on things that he does. You know, he's coming along pretty good. Defensively, Mike Brooks with nine tackles, Morrison with seven, Diego Sama with six. We know what Mike Brooks has done, preseason all-conference. Morrison has really made his presence felt. He had the pick, and uh, Diego Sama, they seem to be picking on him. Talk about how he's been able to hang in there at that corner. Well, the biggest thing is he, he just can't, can't get his head down and have to start, start playing with confidence, you know, and that's one thing that he should do. Uh, he got to start playing with confidence. I mean, everybody going through it, I got. We, we got those, we got those uh, intermediate corners, and he put those tall receivers out there on uh, to throw that jump ball on sometimes, but, you know, um, but we just we, we, we got to play with the hand with Bill, Charles, and, and those are our recruits, and we just got to just gotta continue to press them and make them better. Some of the small things, Coach, and um, – it was brought to my attention, and I didn't think about it. In the second half, uh, we had to burn a, a timeout right off the bat. Yeah, that was some of the guys that went in the locker room and, and decided to to get some ID uh, during the time uh, uh, for what our reason. And then we don't have our left tackle out, and then our running back is not out. So those are the things that we, we can't afford to do. Um, is, is that case? And that's some of the things that this week that we're gonna work on um, this week, and that's one of the things we're gonna work on tonight. <coughs> 
is our, is our sideline operation. Uh, we got to get it better. And uh, I talked to the coach about it Sunday, and I talked to him about it this morning. And that's what we're going to work on tonight, during our, during our night practice tonight, of getting the operation better. All right, 43 minutes after the hour, we're going to go to the phone lines. Cassandra calling from Natchez. Uh, Philly, WMISWTYJ in Natchez. Good evening, Cassandra. How you doing? All right. How you doing? Doing pretty good. Good. Uh, Coach Magnet, I heard your uh, call me the other day about leadership, and I could be concerned. When did you step in as the leader or head coach? I am. I am the leader. I am the leader. I am the leader. I am the leader. But we're talking about players' leadership. We're talking about player leadership, not a head coaching leadership. I do the things that I'm supposed to do to try to get these kids prepared for a football game, and that's all I do. We go out, we coach these young men every day and work hard at it. So leadership kind of come with them. That's on old guys. I try to pump those guys up every week to come out and be leaders. So leadership don't have anything to do with the head coach you're doing. Like I said, I discussed that with the team. I discussed that with the staff. I discussed that with everybody. So all the people in the stand that talk about these young men, that got these young men playing football, is no concern. If y'all want a free trip to Houston, y'all can go to Houston any time to party. You don't need this foot. You don't need this football team to go to Houston. We're trying to coach this team to win football games. We're not putting these kids in any position to go out and lose football games. That's for all the critics out there that talk about these players and these coaches. We coach these young men to be winners. Well, they, I, it starts with me, and that's what I said. It's not about it's not about my leadership. It's about the young men trying to be leaders themselves. We can talk about as coach. We can talk about leadership all day to the young men. Matter of fact, I talked to them about leadership today, and that don't that that, that I, I continue to do that as a coach. That's something that I do. That's something that the staff do. So it don't have anything to do with myself or this coaching staff about leadership. This something has to come with between the players. They have to find themselves a way to say, okay, the guy, let's get together and let's do this. That's coming from the players. I could talk to them all day about doing the right thing. Do that make them go out and do the right thing? I don't think so. But I at least try to get them to do that. We try hard every day, ma'am. All right, Cassandra, thank you very much. We appreciate that. We appreciate that. And that's that's always a tough thing, Coach, when when things go kind of sideways and who steps up and it's coming from within. And, you know, we have veteran leadership on this team, you know, guys that have been a part of this this, this great run, the championships. And this time last year, it was, you know, we were frustrated by what happened when we went to Grambling last year, and we somehow got it together. So we've been through this before. It's just a matter now of doing it because we had a little buffer last year. Now A&M has improved, and I said it last year, watch out for A&M, and they've got Bama State this week. So, you know, we really got to continue to hone in and hunker down. They was telling them always be a tough team, Charles, but, you know, we try to teach these young men every day about self-esteem, uh, being motivated, and things like that, about the winning tradition and about how to win football games and, and how to prepare themselves, uh, not only for a football game, but, but for Life outside of football, that's one thing that we instill in these young men every day. So we don't go out and just and give these kids bad information about things that's going to happen. We go out and try to make these kids improve every day of the things they got to do on the field and off the field. As a coaching staff, that's what we do. All right, we'll take a break here. 46 minutes after the hour, we'll be right back after this on the Fred McNair Radio Show. 91.7 FM has always tried to stay one step ahead of the curve. Done it again with a new and improved website, WPRL.org. It's got all the latest in national and local news, as well as your favorite WPRL <laughs> shows and personalities. From these worthy to be praised gospel program with Jay Miles to Jazzy Jazz, and R&B with Jamario Brooks, student shows, and of course, all of your Alcorn State University sports broadcasts. You can listen to WPRL.org from your cell phone or tablet, Android or Apple. Just go to TuneIn Radio and type in Life 91.7 WPRL in the search box. Anytime, anywhere, any source. Desktop, laptop, cell phone or tablet, WPRL has you covered. For more information, call 601-877-6290. All of this from 91.7 WPRL and on WPRL.org.
All right, the time is 47 minutes after the hour. Glad you can join us here on the Fred McNair Radio Show. Obviously a tough game, a tough loss uh, against Grambling. We appreciate Cassandra calling in. Uh, you talk about you know, the leadership factor, and that's obviously something you, you deal with on a, on a daily basis. This was a big game, and we talked about it, probably the premier game um, in the SWAC. This game has been marked on a lot of people's calendars since the spring, and you know the SWAC championship game rematch and all that. A tweet from IM3, team seemed to make the game bigger than what it is. Too amp, too hype. What can be done to settle the team down, or is that something that's just a natural thing in a big game like this? Uh, during, the course, during the course of practice, Charles, you know, all week long, you know, we talk about um, the, 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 the schematic stuff about a football, a football team. You know, when you talk about Gremlin, you know, everybody knows who Gremlin is, especially on this football team. There's coaching staff and as players. And it's no, it's no bigger than it was with Southern. It wasn't no bigger than it was with Prairie View. You know, these kids prepared themselves all week to go out and play a, a football game because every game is a big game, Charles. No matter who it is, um, we go out and, and try to give these guys the best information that we can to execute the best that they can on Saturday. And, you know, and, and, and um, we don't go out and tell these kids, let's have seven turnovers in a football game. And so uh, that's something that we don't do. Um, but we, um, we emphasize everything that we can to to the young men's about how to prepare for a football game. What was the speech coming home I mean, with a bye week coming up, trying to get healthy, um, and all everything that took place? What was the speech to your team in the locker room? Well, I guess the biggest thing is it, it wasn't a speech. It was some of the, some of the things that, that we can't allow to happen, uh, you know, as far as the turnovers and, and, the, and the way we play. And uh, that was one of the things that and I told them. I said, until we start doing the things that we're taught, you know, it's going to be that way. And, Coaches emphasize every day in practice um, about doing their job, and, 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 and when they start doing the individual stuff, that's when everything starts to, to happen. But uh, we just got to continue to press on with these young men and, and try to just emphasize every day as we do to do, the, do their job, and nobody else. If 11 guys doing their job, then everybody can execute all 11 of them. But you may have one.